All right, welcome back, guys. Good to see you. Um, you know, uh, yep. t we had a viewer question about um, Paul's statement about my grace is sufficient. And so, DMAC, you brought that uh, to our attention. And so we just want to kind of cover that uh, that subject uh, for the night, you know, from different perspectives. You know, however the most I lead you guys, you know, to discuss it, you know, that's the direction we're going to go. So I just want to give a little context to what um, what Paul was talking about when he said my grace uh, is sufficient. So I'm going to go to uh, uh, Second Corinthians uh, 1 through 10. And Paul is really talking about, you know, spiritual warfare. And so I'm going to read these few scriptures and then we'll we'll dive right into this. All right. So in Second Corinthians, uh, uh, the 12th chapter. It starts off, it says, it's not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come uh, to visions and revelations of Yahuwah. He said, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell. Elohim Noah, such as one caught up to the third heaven. Now, in this scripture, Paul is talking about himself. And he said, and I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell Elohim Noah how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. For though I would desire the glory, I should not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he hears of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations that was given to me, a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought you thrice that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness, most gladly there. For will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ might rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. All right. So that's that's kind of where we're starting off, uh, you know, uh, tonight. So. Paul is in a situation where he's uh, he, he's in communion with the Most High. Uh, he's out doing his ministry, and the Most High is now wanting to reveal some things to Paul. And he's caught up into the third heavens, and it's it's it's, it's uh, you know it's such a real event that he's saying I can't even tell if I'm in my natural body or not. You know that's how that's how you know real the event is, and he's. You know how it reveals all of these secrets to him, all of these mysteries to him. And so he's got this great revelation from the Most High. And he has two dilemmas. He doesn't want other people to think because of the revelation that he has from the Most High that he's more, he's more special than anybody. And at the same time, he doesn't want to get caught up in himself, which is easy to do. You know, you know, he's I got all this information. And so now, you know, I don't want to be prideful about, you know, uh, my, the information at the most as if I'm more special than everybody else. Th if that makes sense, because he's been given this, this, all of this knowledge. And so now, uh, you know, one of the things that the most high allowed to happen to him is that he, he allowed a evil spirit to follow Paul wherever he went, pretty much. And that's why he called the, he, he was a thorn in his flesh. He, 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 he allowed this spirit to, to follow him everywhere to keep him humble. All right. And so everywhere you went, you saw Paul dealing with things, whether he was in a shipwreck, whether he was bit by a snake, or whether he was stoned in Lystra, you know, all these things happened to Paul and Paul, you know, was saying, that these things are happening to me to keep me humble so that the power, if I'm weak, the power of them, I'll depend upon the power of the most high to help me out. And so we get to this terminology, then my grace is sufficient. 
And so we had to then look at what does grace give us that, you know, because this is a confusing statement for a lot of people. You know, Paul has asked Most High three times to take something away from him. And Most High doesn't answer that question about taking it away. He just said, my grace is, is sufficient. How do we manage that? Why can't you just pull me out of trouble? Why why do I have to stay in the trouble? And then you're talking about your grace is sufficient. I thought you were just going to deliver me and remove the trouble. And so it brings up this dilemma in our lives, you know, of, of you know, the timing of deliverance. Why does he allow me to go through some of the things that I'm going through? Um, and so these are the things that, that Paul is dealing with. But he hears from the most High. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. So that's where I kind of want to start. So I'll, I'll, I'll hand it over to see your perspective on what Paul was, what was, uh, what the most high was saying when he was saying my, my grace is, is sufficient. Hmm. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, one, one of the challenges, <clears throat> excuse me, that the, uh, that the body faces uh, is wrong teaching. Um, it's from my experiences, um, I, I've lost count of the number of, of uh, messages on grace where it was defined as unmerited favor. And in, in, in the way that <clears throat> I've heard it preached, and even with that, that simple definition, it, it doesn't really get us to where Paul is in trying to understand what the most I was saying to him. You know, he's he's going through all this trouble. He's going through all this these difficulties. And he doesn't want like 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 all of us, he doesn't want to keep going through this this stuff. He does he does he doesn't want to continue to deal with difficulty, but the most I says, <clears throat> I'm not I'm not removing it for you. My grace is sufficient. And 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 when, and when I try to plug in unmerited favor, it just doesn't fit there. It just absolutely doesn't fit. So right. You know, what is it saying? And so the, the imagery, the imagery that that, uh, that comes to my mind, you know what? I can't believe I started this off. Dante, I'm so sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to see anybody going to do it but me. <laughs> All right, sorry. man. Dante, let's right. go, man. Yeah, we... <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway, um, the, the, the imagery that comes to my mind is, a, is, a, is an infant um, learning how to walk. And as parents, you know, as as a, as a keeper, you know, we're, we're right there as that this infant is taking its steps, making sure that in the event the infant falls, you know, we're right there to help it to keep walking. And and that's what grace is in, in my understanding. And what Paul doesn't and, and and he doesn't seem to take into account in the scripture is that even though he's going through this stuff, <clears throat> you know, that the Most High is with him. He's, he's made a promise to never leave him or forsake him. And he's telling him, no matter what you're going through, if you, if you, if you put your hand in the fire and you get bit by a snake, it's not going to hurt you because I'm, I'm there with you. My grace is sufficient for you. No matter what you're going through, I am right there. And whatever the situation is, I'm able to, to take control of that situation uh, for my glory and for your good, so that it does not hurt you, and so, and so by by understanding that He is with us, that's a, uh, for me just the thought of that's humbling. You know, I, I got a I got this itch that I want to scratch, but no matter how hard I try to scratch this itch, I can't scratch it. The Most High is the only person that's going to only one that's going to be able to satisfy this need in my life. That's a humbling thing. That's a real humbling thing. That, that's real humbling, man. So it, it, it when you're talking, it reminds me of I think it's in one of the Peters, and I had to look it up. But he he talks about our faith having to stand trial, mm -hmm. you know, and how you know pretty much it's impossible for us to say we have faith unless it's tested, right? And so we had to we have to be put in situations where it seems like whatever promise he made to me is in danger. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, y'all, y'all feel what I'm saying. So, what he promised me something. I'm, I'm gonna take you to a land flowing with milk and honey, but mm -hmm. this desert, this wilderness right here, don't look like that. Right. And so now, what you promised me is being is 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 being tested in my own mind. Mm -hmm. And so I, now I have to decide in every situation that I'm in, do I believe what he said or do I believe my circumstances? And that's a dilemma because we're 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 always present in this flesh. Always. The flesh has its feelings, the flesh has its desires, the flesh have uh, things that are real, that are present all the time. And that's one of the ineffectiveness of I think churchy teaching. Mm -hmm. Because it 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 almost teaches that we're void of those things. That if if you're brought into the kingdom, those things disappear. Right. And that that's not even what Scripture is saying. Scripture is saying those things are ever present with you. And I'm gonna give you another option to believe in and trust in. And I want you to choose. And whichever one you choose is the one that you believe in. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right? So 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 regardless of what it is, there's something opposite. There's a warfare going on. All right, go ahead. No, the, the, so, the uh, difficulty is not our situation that we're going through. The difficulty we face is the battlefield that's in our head between our two ears. That's that's where the fight is. Oh man. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we had so, so I mean, Hank so, and, and, and Kendall, both of you are are saying stuff that's so powerful about the grace of the most high. Um and if I can try to add to it, uh, we have to remember that when it comes to the grace of the Most High, and and the the purpose of it, it is a, it is a very real, real thing. And what I mean by it being very real is, it's not this you get to skip um, through life untouched and skip through um, your day to day untouched, because there are scriptures there are. that give that definition. Gives and depth and meaning to the grace of the Most High. In Romans, Paul says, I reckon that the present sufferings or the sufferings of this present time are not worthy uh, to be compared with the glory that which will be revealed in us. In James, he says, count it all joy when we fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. We have to remember that grace is profound. It's so profound that it's not just the very elementary definition of unmerited favor. It is a working uh, in us in that we have to, one, humble ourselves to understand that, okay, I'm facing something. I'm facing something really difficult right now, or I, 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 I have faced a number of difficult things in my life. And if you look back, and if you, if you do a kind of a comparison of when you went through testing and trials and situations and you handle let's say one particular set of trials you handled it very uh selfishly and you asked all these questions why me why do i got to go through this blah 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 and then versus when you've gotten older and wiser and you have sought the most high more more fervently and you've learned more about the most high and you've learned more about his grace and how it is sufficient in our weakness how it is sufficient when we think we need something else, Yah says, no, you don't. All you need is me and my grace. And then we, we do the comparison and we realize, well, when I faced it humbly, trusting in the most high, I gained wisdom. I gained an understanding. I gained patience. I gained this settling that, you know, how you, some of us, you know, you have grandparents that, you know, growing up, they always seem unbothered by everything. You know, it's kind of like that. You, you're you able to go through, you know you're going through, but you're able to be okay and be all right and be and be unbothered because you know that the grace of the Most High is sufficient through whatever it may be. And, and granted, you know, some people may ask the question, well, what about those times when people lose or when they pass away after a battle with whatever it may be? Well, you have to look at it like this. You're, you're, if, if you are in Christ, then to die is gain. So his grace is sufficient either way you look at it, but you have to, you have to search the meat of grace. You have to, you have to, you have to see, you know, how, how much muscle grace will give you, spiritual muscle it will give you if you just let it exercise you. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's good. That's good. That passage of scripture that that we read in in, in Second Corinthians concerning Paul reminds me of another passage of scripture in Hebrews chapter twelve. In Hebrews chapter twelve, it says, "Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so doth easily beset us, and let us run with patience." the race that is set before us, looking unto Yeshua, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right right hand of of the throne of Yah. So for consider him that endured such contradictions of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Mm I wanted to talk about this. Hank, you tore a little bit of my thunder away, but I like that. That's good. We're on one accord. All praises to the most high. Yeah. But but when Paul was speaking about this torment that, that the most high was allowing, I think it's important for us to remember, in contrast to one of the answers to that to that question that I that, that I uh, forwarded to the group from last week's conversation, one of the answers was or I should say one of the speculations was that what Paul was speaking about at the time had to do with, could potentially have had to do with two individuals that were causing Paul some grief that Paul was attempting to pray, pray out of his life. But I think it's important to remember what scripture is saying here in the re, in in respects to what the contradictions that Yeshua had to put up with while he was walking this earth, and that was the contradictions of the mind, mm-hmm. that the attack of faith and faithfulness starts here. We we hope to prepare for it here in our hearts. And even when we have a good and solid foundation laid, yes, that's just as Yeshua did. I mean, the most the 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 he is the south the foundation upon which we build. But even the foundation had to go to the father and say, if there's any other way, mm-hmm. let this cup pass by me. Now, I don't know about you all, but for me, that's saying a whole lot when it comes to the torment that Yeshua was enduring in his own mind. Think about this. And and truthfully, we don't really see any evidence that the most high answered his prayer other than with silence so yeshua's resolution at the each time after each time he prayed was not my will but your will be done and so yeshua himself was he he had he had to have been grounded and and founded and grounded in what the most high's will was and where did he get that from he got it from the word of yah he was the word of yah We've talked about how he had to how he had to learn again that he was the the incarnate word of Yah, but the incarnate word of Yah had to go back to the spoken word of Yah and see that this is the will of Yah and surrender to it. Now I I, I know I know personally the challenges that come in, in, in when your when your body is being attacked. I have been under attack in my body and i do believe on on, on several occasions it's been a spiritual attack that manifests itself physically in my body with symptoms i've never experienced before and, and circumstances that even that no no doctor no cardiologist no pulmonary no, no pulmonary doctor could figure out and so i've been I, I i know for a fact that i that the warfare is real when it comes to the mind because when you hear you know, you're in renal failure out of the blue. I'm like, wait a minute. I bike five miles a day. i you know, I, st- I eat healthy. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm in renal. Fa- oh, you're, you're in renal failure. What? And so now your mind starts to roll. Your mind starts thinking and the thoughts that come to your mind, I'll be, hey, let's be frank. Am I going to live? Am I going to die? And, and, 
that is the that is the the how how I say it. That's the beginning, or that's the that's part of the beginning of the attack that the that the enemy will begin to to place on you in your mind to pull you off of your foundation of faith. But we have to remember that mm -hmm. Yeshua endured the contradiction, and having endured the contradiction, he did what what Kendall said. He he made the choice to choose what Yah said. And so we I think it's important for us to remember that Paul himself having 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 witnessed and seen things in the third heaven that no man it wasn't even lawful for him to come out of his mouth and tell anybody at this level what he heard at that level. It was against supernatural eternal law for him to do it. He couldn't do it. The father had to put something in in his way to to keep him humble but at the same time how do I say it? The 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 Paul having Paul having having experienced what he experienced, he experienced it. He experienced at a at a, at, a, at a level of spiritual awakening, understanding that when he came back here to the to the place where he knew he was on earth, he had to reconcile the contradiction. Is that making sense? Mm -hmm. it's, it's so real quick. I, I won't be long, but I want to. I just want to read a little bit more into that passage. It says, "For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin, and ye have forgot, and and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you." Uh, as unto children, my son, despise not thou the chastening of Yah, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Mm. So we have to reckon that Paul was dealing with the rebuke. He got rebuked by the father. He said, no, I'm not taking that away from you. No, you're going to be, my grace is sufficient for you. I'm going to let you get this spanking right here. But the spanking is a part, like you mentioned, Hey, the spanking is all a part of the oh, I'm sorry what, what you mentioned Dante of the of the of the working that the father is doing in us to pull out of us what 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 matters because the scriptures keep see, say, teach clearly that no flesh shall glory in his presence what say you gentlemen man that's powerful that's mm -hmm. powerful that's powerful Every, everything you guys are saying is, is so powerful and the one thing that I kept hearing from all of you is the mind Mm -hmm. you, you know, you you use the word the contradiction that's in all of us, because there is a contradiction that we're hearing two voices is pulling at us all the time, and so there's a contradiction within ourselves. You know, we, our flesh feels one way, and we're 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 you know we're trying to pull away from what we feel and what 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 the what the flesh is is is, is wanting to draw us to, and then we hear another voice in there. And so this yep. is what this is where that 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 great we go back to the grace again, and we had to ask the question again because, like Dante was saying, there's more there when we talk about grace. It was what Hank was saying too. There's 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 we can't just say, uh, you know. Uh, use the terminology. Uh, yeah, that was Hank that was saying that, that, you know, it's just uh, unmerited favor. It is, but in what sense? And so then we had to look at um, what did we receive when we accepted the Christ of the Most And he uses the word like, you know, we have this treasure in an earthen vessel. Y'all hear, hear what he's saying? He said, when we accepted the grace and mercy of the Most High, he said, we, we, he put a treasure in us so that whatever comes out of us, Yah himself gets the glory. That makes, that makes sense. So now he's, so what is this treasure that he put in us because of his grace and his work and, you know, that he did? What did he give us? And the first thing that we see that he does because he's talking to the disciples and he's talking about, you know, when you're regenerated and when you go through this and all these type things, when I, you know, so he was talking about when he was resurrected, he was going to give them something because of the grace that he's going to give. It. And he got up, he went into a room with them. And the first thing that he did when they trusted in what he told them, uh, he breathed into them. That's what the scripture said. He breathed into them, the Holy Ruach. All right. That was the gift. That's the treasure that he put in us. 
And so now he not only puts it in us when we accept his grace and mercy, but he puts it in us and he he describes what it is that he put in us. And he says, I have not given you a spirit of fear. I, I want you to understand what I put in you. I gave you one of power. I gave you a spirit of love. And I gave you a spirit of a sound mind. Y'all get what I'm saying? So that means the antithesis of that is also at work. There's a spirit of fear that has, you know, less power, hate, and an unsound mind. Yeah. So that means, you know, when we're talking about the mind, that means in every situation, there's there's two spirits at work. There's two spirits at work. We're in spiritual warfare. And that's why he said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness in high place. In every situation, there's two spirits. And we have to, you know, try to decipher between what voice we are hearing in every situation. And like you were saying, uh, D-Mac, when you get hit with something and somebody tells you you're in arena of fa failure or you're going through what Corey is going through and somebody comes in and they say, you know, you, you, you've got uh, this disease or whatever. All kinds of things is going to start going through your mind. You know, uh, you know, you get threatened. Uh, the company is going to shut down and, and you're the provider of your family. All kinds of things gonna they're gonna go through your mind so there's situations and so now he's saying but you have something in you that's gonna lead you in the right direction if you don't trust in how you feel that's a dilemma i, I think you have some opportunity to, to amplify that e even more uh, because it, it gets lost it gets lost in the message, you know, and the scripture is what it, it is. And, and I, I'm not trying to add anything to the scripture that is not there, nor am I, you know, trying to take anything away from it. But but I, I agree with you a, a thousand percent is that, you know, we, we find ourselves at a crossroads when we're facing a difficult situation. And scripture does tell us that he's given us, He's not giving us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. But if we amplify that, he's saying, I've given you my love. I've given you my power. And I've given you my soundness. So now choose ye this day, as Joshua said. Or, or, or as, as Isaiah said, whose report are you going to believe? <laughs> So we we find ourselves at this crossroads, and we have to remember that everything I think it's in Second Peter says everything that that pertains unto life and godliness, He's given us all of it. We're we're not lacking anything in terms of what we need to get through this life and its difficulties. And what we have to understand that when He allows difficulties to to come at us, our credibility is at stake. Are we going to believe that he is with us? I think it's in in, in Matthew and Luke when he, he's talking, Yeshua is talking about the, the spirits that comes over to take over a house. And he says, when I, and, you know, they're, they're talking about him casting out demons. And he says, if, if, if I cast out demons, then that's evidence to you that the spirit of, the, 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 of, of Yah is upon you, is among you. And so, but and so, if if we if we choose ourselves, we get to the crossroads, and we don't choose Him, then we we lose credibility that He is with us. We 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 put ourselves in a situation where we are not the the living testimony that He is faithful to His word, that He's faithful to us with signs following, that He is going to deliver us, that He's going to do everything He says He's going to do it in accordance with that covenant when we choose our own path. And so I'll, I'll stop right there because I, I I feel the B three. Y'all y'all, this is this is really good. Um, and I and I and I and I really hope that it's opening eyes to kind of understand how profound the grace of the Most High is. Mm -hmm. You know, we we we're taught 
you know, growing up in whatever denomination, religion that we may all have all come through, we're taught this emotions based uh, grace, this emotions based uh, nope. belief, this yep. emotions based, uh, you know, this 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 emotional tie or making making the most high uh, an emotion, you know, and that if I feel this way, then that must be the most high. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what it has done is it has severely diluted uh, our ability to tap into what he's put in us, to, 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 to allow the, the Holy Ruach that we have when we, when we receive Christ and his salvation and through our faith and the grace of, of Yah, we are, we dilute our ability to, to tap into it because we're looking for this very surface emotional uh, experience. And 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 over the years and decades, if we if we've paid attention, the 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 those institutions haven't got any better with teaching what grace really is. They haven't got gotten any 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 deeper with teaching and showing and 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 and, and guiding uh, young people in Christ or anybody in Christ to what grace really is. It's still the same surface emotional uh, tie to it. And I'm saying all that because, you know, all, all what I'm hearing tonight is it is the Holy Spirit working and producing in us what Yah has always had there waiting for us. But we've missed, we missed the mark. We miss it and we miss our full potential. We miss, we, we miss reaching our full potential in Yah when the battlefield of the mind gets the best of us when we're leaning more towards the side that says, well, you're supposed to, you, you know, you're the grace of, of the most High is supposed to allow you to skip all this pain and suffering, or all this heartache or all this loss or all this losing everything or all this uh, trouble in your body or losing loved ones. It's supposed to, you know, you're supposed to be able to skip all that and go straight to the, the reward. No, that's not what it is. It's not a rewards based uh, a thing. It's not a. It's, it's not a pyramid scheme. You know, grace. It 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 is. It is so big and so and so yah to where we can only understand it in part. But our responsibility is to humble ourselves and follow the example that our Mashiach gave us. He was. I mean, think about it. If you are that scared of the torture that you're about to go through, if you are that terrified of the pain you're about to endure that you are sweating drops of blood and you're and you're sitting there and you're praying and and you're like my boys ain't with me they over there sleep I'm, I'm by myself and you're praying and you know how bad it's going to hurt you know that your flesh is going to get ripped from your bones you know that these romans pride themselves on 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 torture and then you know that you got to go to the most tormentous parts of hell and yet you humble yourself. You humble yourself to say, not my will, but your will be done most high. And be yeah. separated spiritually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so where so the so the question that I pose tonight to anyone who hears this is is are we truly humbling ourselves before the most high daily? So that his grace can have its full work in our lives. So that we realize that there's nothing in our own power or in our own actions or our own strength that we can achieve without his grace. Yeah, that's powerful. That's powerful question and in response to that. I'm going to read. Uh, just follow you up on that. In 2 Corinthians uh, first chapter, Paul is talking about the difficulties that he and others who are who are who are going out doing what the most high want them to do, the difficulties that they are facing. Watch, watch what he says. In verse eight, he says, Second Corinthians first chapter, uh, verse eight. He said, For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia. Listen to what he said, that we were pressed out of measure above strength in other words above that strength that we had on our own above strength in so much that we despaired even 
of life. They, they want to die. This is Paul. He said, but he said, we had the sentence of death in ourselves. We want to die. That we, but, but that we should not trust in ourselves. But in Elohim which rages the dead. So he's saying, okay, we're going through this traumatic experience here. And we're feeling a certain way. Feeling like we're going to die. Right. And he said, so I got a choice here. Either I'm going to believe and trust in what I'm feeling, which is real. It was real. It was heavy. Or I'm going to believe and trust in the most happy. To the point where he was saying, I'm not going to trust in myself. I'm going to trust. I'm going to even go past the point of death and say that even if I do die, he got me. Listen to what he said. He mm -hmm. said that we should not trust in ourselves, but in Elohim, which raises the dead. So even if this situation that I'm in, if he allows it to overtake me, he's going to raise me up again. Now, that's a different level of dealing <laughs> with the situation. You know, and so We've got to learn that this is where we want to be. This is where we want to get to. That even in the, the midst of trouble, this, this is why he could say stuff like all things. The good, the love of the Lord, the call according to his purpose. He gets it. He's going to make this thing somehow. I don't know how, how you're going to do it, but somehow he's putting all this stuff in the bowl, my sufferings, my joy, uh, my lack of peace, my peace. He's putting all the ingredients in a bowl and he's mixing all that thing up. And he said, at the end of the day, you know, my grandmother, she, you know, I used to go in the kitchen when she was cooking. I used to watch her cook and she used to put the eggs in a bowl and the flour in the bowl and, and he, she would put the sugar in a bowl and she put all these things in the bowl. Now, each one of those elements by themselves had no... Uh, good taste to it. Sugar by itself didn't do anything for me. The eggs didn't do anything for me by by themselves. You know what I'm saying? The flour, you know, didn't do anything. But it was some kind of way, after she mixed all of those elements up together, and she stirred them up and beat them and put them through the things they need to go through and put that stuff in the oven, put a little bit of heat to it. Some kind of way, when she pulled that stuff out, the taste just melt it in your so all the ingredients, although not desirable, in each of themselves, all those things work together. Kim, Kim, well, I, got to, I got to chime in on this one. <laughs> I mean, we, I think spiritually right now we are we we are hitting all the pistons. Uh, we, we're firing on all pistons. This um this. This, uh, this this vision that this, this this picture that Dante Hank and you and I have have made a point on is that our faith has value to the Most High. Like there's real value. It's it's more valuable than we can even begin to imagine what the value is. It's kind of like um. It's kind of like sitting, it's as if we're sitting on top of, all of us are all sitting on top of our own plot of, of land. And, 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 and little do we know that, you know, 100 feet, 200 feet down is this giant reserve of petrol oil <laughs> that we haven't yet tapped in. There's a, there's, a, there's a value more than just the surface of the land. We're looking at the land and we're like, oh, I can grow this, I can grow that. But the father is looking much deeper down. And he's drilling down to a place where you haven't even begun. We haven't even begun to tap into the value of the land. And that's where our faith resides. That, that whatever the most high is doing by putting fire, to whatever to 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 our lives and whatever we have to go through, he's he's extracting in the process of extracting something that's going to not just make us wealthy, 
but to show how do I say it to 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 show the value that he put in us already. I I, I have to go back to um to Hebrews chapter twelve. I want to read that up the latter portion of that it says in 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 uh, in verse six. And I didn't use his word. He did so for whom Yah loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son he received. He he beats his sons, he scourges us. He it seems contradictory because the, the, the church today has taught us Yah is love. <laughs> but and that you know that feel good, that 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 milk toast Yah who who only wants you to do to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. That's the if that's what he has for you, and, and however healthy you are, and however well, however much wealth you you garner, this is a measure of the of uh, this is a this is a direct one to one measure of the love that Yah has for you. No, that's a lie, and let's just call it what it is. That's trash. Let's call it what it is. Scripturally speaking, that is trash because the, the scriptures teach very clearly that if the Most High loves you, He gonna put you through some stuff deliberately. He's going to put you in the grinder. He's going to run. He's going to do what he has to do. He's going to put you in the heat to pull out of you what he's already put in you to demonstrate to you that he is who he says he is and that you do have the power to overcome through him. It says here, if ye endure chastening, Yah dealeth with you as sons. For what son is he whom the father chases not? But if ye be without chastening, wherefore you are all partakers, then... Your bastards and not sons. Mm. What does that say about that message <laughs> that we hear? That God only wants you healthy, wealthy, and wise. And all we ever do is roll around and we don't experience any kind of pain, no suffering, no disappointment, no hurt, nothing of that sort. What is the Most High saying about you? Are you a true son or daughter of the Most High Yah? Or are you a bastard? If you right. don't go through anything. That's, that's your word, but it's not my word. He wrote it. That's good. Says, but without chase, without chastement, wherefore you are all partakers, you are bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have we all have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather more be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasures, but he out of our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, after it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby, wherefore lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight the paths of your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. The Most High has us going through stuff in order not only to prove that he is a father, even more than our fleshly fathers, but that his plan ultimately is to is to our profit. Yes, right. sir. It doesn't seem that way when someone tells you your wife may have cancer, which is the message that we recently heard. <laughs> it don't seem that way when someone says, like I said, you are renal failure and your heart's not working right. It don't seem that way. It, and, 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 and this this thing right here starts getting tinkered with. The, the enemy comes in quick, I mean real quick, trying to trying to take up that seed that was scattered to find out how deep that seed is really planted. Is it in rocky soil? Is it on the surface? Can I snatch that seed away? But all of this is to our profit, our profit. And I think we have to re remember that when we're reading passages of scripture, like when Paul, as we're reading now in, in 2 Corinthians uh, 12, where Paul is saying what he's saying about being buffeted and, and having to deal with it and praying that the Most High would just take it away, take it away. And Father says, no, no, no. My grace is sufficient. And one more thing to add, I'll, I'll, I'll shut it down here. Our faith is so valuable. It has so much value. Our faith does not die. Just like, as you mentioned, Kendall, our faith has value beyond the grave. Remember how we talked about uh, last week when we were talking about when Yeshua revealed himself in, in Sheol and how the souls in Sheol, they were still in a, in a, in a state of what? Faith. And so what, what, whatever we culture now and whatever we 
whatever we cultivate now in the way of our faith is going to carry on as a legacy long after these bodies of flesh drop and hit the ground. That's good. I, that's good. I, and and I keep thinking about that that vivid description that Kendall gave of what in my mind looks like a pound cake coming out the the oven. And, and y'all know what pound cakes are. Mm -hmm. You know they 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 a lot of ingredients separate that don't taste good, look good, but when they come together, boy, that that's that's good. But what I want to say is this, and 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 D Mac, man. All praises to the most high because all things working together for the good don't feel good. All things working together for the good don't always look good. All things working together for the good don't always uh, have good uh, emotions tied to them or good good anything tied to it. Sometimes they, they look bad, they feel bad, they look bad. They don't feel good. They hurt. Sometimes they 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 deal with the, the 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 moments of being feeling real low. But all of those ingredients in our lives are working together for the good. And even in the heat, when we put it into the oven, it's still working together for <laughs> the good of all of us who love the Most High and who are called according to His purpose. His purpose. Not mine, not y'all's, his purpose. So that's where the humbling comes in. And that's where the his grace is sufficient comes in. That's where the not my will, but your will comes, your will be done most high what comes in. All things work together for the good. Remember the good. Yeah. And that and that's where you know, we had to understand the warfare because it's 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 a moment by moment decision. It's not a, you know, we have a good night tonight and I'm done. I've completely made up. No, because circumstances keep coming up and we have to keep making up our minds on each situation that comes up that no, all things work. You know, and that's why Yeshua is like, y'all just deal with what's going on today. You got enough evil in today to deal with. When we get to tomorrow, if I grace you with tomorrow, we'll deal with tomorrow, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, I get what I'm saying. So I'm, I'm gonna read this Romans five real quick, and I, and I hand it off. And he talks about Romans five, how one thing contributes to another thing. Romans five, and he says, therefore, being justified by faith, as we we've been justified, we've been we've accepted His grace, we have peace with Elohim through, uh, you know, uh, you know, our Lord Yeshua Hamashiach. He said, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace. You know, we believe them. We got access to the grace way and we stand. That's where we stand. That's our foundation. And rejoice in hope of the glory of Elohim. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations. And see, that doesn't make sense to unless you have faith. Mm -hmm. He said, but we glory in tribulations also knowing he said, this is what we, knowing that tribulation work is patience. So now he's talking to, he said, when you go through whatever you go through, your tribulation is going to work out some patience. And what he's saying is that when you're trusting in faith and you're going through, no matter how long you go through and how much trouble you go through and he pull you out, the next time trouble come, you're going to have a little bit more patience because if he pulled me out last time, Y'all get what I'm saying? I know he gonna find a way to pull me out this time. So it increases then our patience the next time. Because, you know, when sometimes when trouble hits you so hard, you know, you get impatient and, and you're worrying and you're anxious and you, and you do it. And he still, it might take him a year, but he works it out for you. So now you've extended now uh, the amount of patience that you have with him. That he's going to do it in his due time. Then he says, well, you know, our patience, you know, got a lunchbox too. And it's going to pick up its pail. And it's going to go to work. And he said the tribulations work in patience. And then patience going to work out some experience. Then you get a little experience. He said, well, experience got a lunchbox. It's got to go to work. He said experience work at hope. He said this hope make it not a shame. Because the love of Elohim is shared abroad in our hearts. By the Holy Ruach which is given unto us. So I'm just saying. 
that one thing works another thing, works another thing, works another thing. And he just keeps working these things uh, out in it. But we have to know this because it's, it's you know, we often talk about faith, but it's impossible to have a level of faith without the word because faith come by hearing and hearing by the word. So first we had to hear what he said about the situation before we can trust in what he said about the situation. So if I know I'm going through hell, but he says, I still got you. That what you're experiencing is not the, you know, is not the promise is to get you to the promise. If I trust that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, Kendall and uh, DMAC, y'all might, y'all might understand this reference because of the gray in your beard. Now, Dante, well, you great. might not get this. But back, <laughs> back, back in the day when I was a kid, I used to watch this cartoon, uh, Justice League, and two of the members of the Justice League were the Wonder Twins. Yeah, I get it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I still have some youth here, but not up yeah. here. <laughs> so, so y'all know that whenever the the one that. Uh, uh, twins were able to uh, do their thing. You know, they they had to come together and touch. They had to touch, and you know, one of the twins had to activate. Act. One twin power Act. activate. <laughs> and so, you know, why why is that relevant? Because you know, the scripture tells us, you know, that to every one of us, the Most High has given us a measure of His faith. You know, what what we what we are working with is what He has broken off from Himself. And it is designed for every difficult situation that he knew that was going to exist on the face of this earth. He knew it. And, and every and, and the these things that we, these difficulties that we go through, they're not just happenstance things. You know, he knows that all right, this is gonna pop up around this time. Um, they're gonna deal with some again. These were things that he knew that we were going to have to go through in order for us to burn off the nonsense that is in us. In Romans chapter 7, Romans chapter 7, starting at around uh, verse um, 16, and it says, if I do what I do not want to do, I admit that the law is good. In that case, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. Verse 18, that's where it was. I know that nothing good lives in me, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. And so, you know, Kendall, you talked about earlier, these two sides, you know, that we're facing. And, you know, one side is the side of the most high, and the other side is our flesh. And in our flesh, not, there's nothing good there. And he has got to work that stuff out of us uh, through trials, through tribulations, through difficulties. And he's given us, he's given us him to get through it. And if we don't take what he has given us by way of his faith, and we we come together like the, the Wonder Twins and activate, we're, we're, we're just, we're, what we're doing is we're relying on ourselves to get through it. Mm -hmm. We're relying on our flesh to get through it. And Paul says in him, and I agree in me, in us, in our flesh, there's no good thing. There's Man. nothing in our flesh that's ever going to please him. That's powerful. I mean, because think about what, what, what what's being said here. So, and, and I'm going to tell you, this freed me up, man, when I, you know, when most High showed me this, you know, this years ago, but he showed me this. Yeah. You know, because when you when you when you when you accept, you know, uh Yeshua salvation and you come into uh the churchy situation, they almost act as if the desires are gone. Yeah. The, right. The, the, that it, it doesn't exist anymore. You're this new creature. Right. And you just don't have that no more. And and it's just like and so here I am experiencing things, knowing I, I have him because I have something pulling at me. At the same time, I still have this other situation that was present before me, before my salvation. And so I'm in this dilemma. And then, you know, when I started getting into the word, then I realized what he's saying to me. 
And it freed me up because I didn't have to no longer feel guilty mm -hmm. because of the flesh that I'm in. And I, I used to tell people, you're going to have desires. You're going to have all these things. But it's it's not that. It's, you know, where where the reward comes in and where we please Yah is that in the presence of those desires mm -hmm. and in the presence of mm -hmm. those things pulling at me, I'd still choose him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. and so that's where that's where the uh you know the, the the glory comes in and so man that freed me up i don't have to walk around in guilt and condemnation because of the desires because i'm in the flesh that's so profound uh because uh and, you know y'all may not believe what i'm about to say but you know i too have sinned and fallen short no <laughs> what saying. Not you, man. Your beard ain't even gray yet. <laughs> man, y'all ain't looking close enough. <laughs> Marcus, you sure did. I got, I got, I got, I got good lighting. I got good lighting. Uh, you know, just look at this kind of on the black part. You know, hold my chin down so you don't see the gray. <laughs> but it's so profound, Doc, because you know, for a long time, I I lived in guilt. You know, teenage years, in my twenties, in my you know, in my thirties, from all the mistakes and while in college, you know, knowing that I never stopped believing, I never, never stopped believing after I confessed Christ, but I, but there was always this constant struggle between my spirit that knew better and my flesh that wanted to feel good. There was always this constant struggle. And what, what I did not learn in church was how to properly fight it and combat it. All I knew is what you said, similar to what you said earlier, is there was supposed to be this magical pixie dust thing that happened at the moment of my, my salvation where there was just no more struggle. And I lived this picture perfect life where I never had a sinful thought. I never had and again or I never will take make a, a sinful act again. But, but my life proved that what I saw and thought I, you know, what I was being taught, that wasn't the truth. The truth is, there's a constant daily struggle between flesh and spirit, and they okay. never agree. And what I try to share with my children, anybody I have a chance to talk to is, listen, none of us are perfect. No man in the pulpit, no man behind the mic, no man with a title, no woman, no whomever. Nobody's slate and plate is clean. There's only one perfect, and that is our, our Messiah, Yahusha HaMashiach. He did it, our faith in his work, our daily humbling ourselves, our daily checking our posture to make sure that we are seeking, that we are searching, we are finding, and that we are praying that he deliver us. And, and the Sefer, it says, from outer darkness and, and, and delivering us uh, and, and leading us away from the evil inclinations. The evil inclinations, that's a daily fight. His grace is sufficient. Even when those those spirits that buffet us and those spirits that tempt us, it's those spirits that torment us, that remind us, remember when, remember when you did this, remember when you did that, remember back then, remember back home, remember this. And, and every day you have to remind yourself by the Holy Spirit that the grace of Yah is sufficient. I have repented. Yah is forgiving me. Keep moving towards him the most high. Keep reading, keep seeking, keep searching, keep praying. But don't hold yourself to a perfect living status because you're in the flesh. You're in the flesh. And that's where the his sacrifice comes in. That's why that's you know where we can lay our sins up on him. That's where communion and all those things come in. And so I think that's where we kind of we miss it. You know, that's why he had sacrificial system set up in Israel. Even after the Day of Atonement, when all the sins of Israel were forgiven, the sacrificial system was there. What, what, it, what it did, it gave me permission to keep going back to the throne of grace. What the high priest did gave me permission to keep going back in the middle of the year after he had done his work to keep going back when I messed up personally. Yeah, big point. Big point. Yeah, uh, it's a, and so that's that's the grace then mm -hmm. you know, that we that we can read, keep reading, that we can keep praying, that we can keep doing those things that He's made available to us to do in the face of the difficulty. That is grace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
I mean, think about David and how much he repented. I mean, how much did David say, forgive me, uh, I have sinned? And think about ourselves. How many times a day or how daily, think about the times we pray and we ask for forgiveness. Even when we can't think of nothing we've done, we're like, well, I may have thought something. Y'all please forgive me. Mm -hmm. You know, because, you know, for me, because of how I, we our minds work and that we are imperfect and flawed, we forget the things we need to remember and remember the things we need to forget. So <laughs> having, doing that, it's like, yeah, please forgive me. I know I'm forgetting something, yeah. you know, but please forgive me. Yeah. You know, I, I repent of, of all my unrighteousness. I repent of all my, my sins, but that's the posture we have to have a posture of humility, yeah. a posture of knowing that you're, you're not going to get it perfect, but you can, you continue to do things with, even more enthusiasm and, and more vigor and more love and more giving of your full self to the y'all every each and every day and learning how to be better at that, presenting yourself a living sacrifice. sacrifice. Shifting the conversation a little bit. We're talking about Paul and we're talking about the spiritual, it was spiritual warfare that he was under. He was buffeted by this spirit and all through life of Christ, we see all of these spirits that, you know, and these demons that, you know, Yeshua is casting out of people and he's doing it. Where did the demons and spirits come from? What, 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 you know, a lot of people don't know what <laughs> this, this idea of where did they come from? Yeah. And I just want to discuss that, that real quick before we close that. Be I, I think I told y'all I I told, I told earlier I got an old book for y'all tonight. <laughs> so, I appreciate so, this segue up because I've been sitting there like a like a like a horse chomping on a bit, ready to. <laughs> uh, all right, so all right. so lead us into this then. Where, where did they come from? All right, so shout out to D Mac. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going to read to you all tonight from Enoch, the fifteenth chapter. All right. I got it up. It, it, it's, short. It, it, it's short. It's not long. <laughs> and it reads, And he answered and said to me, and I heard his voice, Fear not, Enoch, thou righteous man and scribe of righteousness. Approach hither and hear my voice. And go, say to the watchers of heaven, who have sent thee to intercede for them, you should intercede for men and not men for you. Wherefore have ye left the high, holy, and eternal heaven, and lain with women, and defiled yourselves with the daughters of men, and taken to yourselves wives, and done like the children of earth, and begotten giants as your sons? And though you were holy, spiritual, living the eternal life, you have defiled yourselves with the blood of women, and have begotten children with the blood of flesh. And as the children of men have lusted after flesh and blood as those also do who die and perish. Therefore, have I given them wives also that they might impregnate them and beget children by them. And thus nothing might be wanting to them on earth. But you were formerly spiritual, living the eternal life and immortal for all generations of the world. And therefore, I have not appointed wives for you, for as for the spiritual ones of heaven, in heaven is their dwelling. And now the giants who are produced from the spirits and flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth, and on the earth shall be their dwelling. Evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies because they are born born from men and from the holy watchers in their beginning and primal origin. They shall be evil spirits on earth and evil spirits shall they be called. As for the spirits of heaven, in heaven shall be their dwelling. But as for the spirits of the earth, which were born upon the earth, on the earth shall be their dwelling. And the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle and work destruction on the earth and cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst and cause offenses. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against the women because they have proceeded from them. Wow. Okay, evil, so. evil spirits come from 
the Nephilim judged by the Most High, the sons of the the Watchers and the daughters of men. All right, so let's just let's just, let's break that up then. That's a that's a powerful text, and see this this is not taught. You know, even though the Bible, you know, King KJV quotes out of Enoch, the book of Enoch. You know, mm -hmm. so. When you go to Genesis six, this is what Dante was reading. Genesis six tells us that the that the sons of Elohim came down and made it. In, in other words, the watchers or the angels that were supposed to be watching over over men in the earth came down. Some of them were tempted and came down and 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 transformed into the form of men because angels can come into that form and made it, or had you know had relations with earthly women. And out of that relationship created what we call the scripture called the giants. And so the Most High sent Enoch because the watchers were afraid to approach the Most High because they had messed up. And they were asking the Most High if you could have grace on our children, you know, because they love their earthly kids. And they were saying, you know, they wanted to see their kids, you know, uh, be able to grow up and all these type things. And so they sent Enoch to approach the Most High and, and try to intercede for them to receive grace. And so the Most High sent word back to them and said, listen, no, what you've done, you've done. There is no forgiveness for what you've done. And he said, as for your children, they won't be redeemed either. He said, but what's going to happen is, you know, I'm going to give them like 500 years on earth to roam and reign and pillage and do whatever they want. But after that 500 years, I'm sending this flood. And he said, when they die, because they, you know, were created by spiritual beings mating with women, their spirits are going to roam this earth mm -hmm. until the day of judgment, until I deal with that. So when we get into scripture and we see Yeshua casting out demons and casting out these spirits and stuff, this is where they come from. And they used to have a body. So they 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 were you know had appetites while they were in their bodies with earthly stuff. They had lust when they were in their bodies and all these things. All these things they carried with them in these spheres, and that's why you know you see possession and all these things because they want to be able to carry out their old lust you know through a body or through people. So I I just thought it was important for us to get to the origin of where these evil spirits come from. And as Dante was reading, you know, they're here to wreak this havoc on mankind because they can't have the grace that we have. And so they're willing to wreak the havoc upon us uh, as tools of Satan, as tools of the other fallen angels uh, that have not yet been in prison. So it's just uh, a bit of history that most of us don't get in the traditional uh, that uh, you know, I wanted to bring out. So, and that's why they're called familiar spirits, also. And you know, just just give this an this example. There are spirits. Let's say that was with your ancestors a hundred years ago. You know, and and they may have inserted a, a weakness or got somebody to fall for a weakness a hundred, two hundred years ago, and they and they want to keep that in your family. They're familiar with your family. And so when the child is born, they want to try to get that child to experience the same weaknesses as what their fathers did. And so it's just, uh, you know, a continuation uh, of those things. And they're familiar. They watch us. They know our ways. They know all these things about us. And then these are the same spirits that these mediums or these people who perform witchcraft speak to. And they make it look like they know things uh, that, you know, that's, that nobody should know, you know, but they've been around us all our lot watching us. So if, if, if two weeks ago I dropped up my wallet behind the piano and I can't find it, well, the spirit saw that you go to a median and all of a sudden uh, you, you ask the medium, you know, I lost my wallet, you know, you know, where is it? And they asked that familiar spirit, well, the familiar spirit saw that. And it just seemed like some miraculous thing when it's not, it's just a spirit being that's been assigned to, uh, you know, try to buffet, buffet us that sees what we do on a daily, on a daily basis. But anyway, I just wanted to kind of cover that uh, before we got out of here, but that's, I appreciate you uh, bringing that out. Any other comments on that before we, uh, I do want to touch on, on that just a bit. All right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm always astonished when 
when uh, I hear people say things like, oh, that's just a bunch of, that's just a bunch of superstition. That's just a bunch of who we, but yet, and then they turn around and go celebrate Halloween mm -hmm. <laughs> tomorrow with all the ghouls and the, and, 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 and the blood and all that stuff and the vampires. And they'll, they'll talk to you about any measure of, 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 of fiction or fiction writing that they enjoy that involves the supernatural. But when it comes to what the biblical, what the biblical uh, uh, origins and testimony of the supernatural wickedness that we, uh, that, that they celebrate in the natural, the origins of it, oh, that's just, that you can't believe that. But you celebrate this stuff. Mm -hmm. You So you obviously have some measure of belief in this, in the, in, in, in the fact that it exists, but you don't want to believe the biblical testimony of how it came about. And here we have not just one, but two witnesses. We have the scriptures and we also have Enoch and they are, they've come together to say, you know what, this is exactly what happened. This is how it get. Because if you admit, truth be told, to admit the Bible's, the, the Bible's account of how it happened is to also simultaneously admit that the scriptures are true. Mm -hmm. And they can't bring themselves to come to that. So they find another route. They find another, they, they begin to worship. Oh, it's nature. It's the spirit of nature. It's the spirit of, and you add, you add, add in whatever it might be. But, it, but the truth of the matter is scripture is, is, is clear. Scripture, scripture is, is, is direct. It tells you exactly how these entities came into being and why they are the way they are. And, and, and not only that, but it, there is, there is, there's ample, there's ample evidence, to, even in science. You've got scientists now, which is a religion in and of itself. Scientists are beginning to, to admit that there are things beyond the realm of physics. They start getting into quantum physics that they can't explain. You got CERN over there that that, that people have have uh, made reports on. They've heard voices and howlings and sounds coming from this scientific d device as they as they began to fire this thing up, and they're hearing the eeriness of things that they hadn't expected they would hear. And now science is beginning to admit that there is a realm beyond even what they understand where something exists. Mm -hmm. You know why? They're attempting to pierce the veil that the Most High has set up between the natural and the supernatural through their science. And so it's always easier I, for, for the, for the non-believer, the person who wants to reject scripture, it's always easiest for them to dismiss the Bible, but the Bible is very clear. That's the only point I wanted to make. About yeah, that's it. good. That's good. That's good. And by us? Yeah, I think we also have to acknowledge um, the persistence of these evil spirits to uh, do what they do and try to circumvent the will of the Most High and if it were possible for them to find grace. You know, they're, they're very persistent. You read in Luke, um, <clears throat> you know, Yahushua is talking about, he's talking to the, uh, you know, the the, uh, the the people about, you know, the, the, I guess the, the Jewish leaders uh, who are talking to them about, he's, you're, you're casting out devils in the name of Beelzebub. <clears throat> And he, he he tells this you know great story, but it, it says that if if I cast if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore shall they be your judges. But if I with the finger of Yahuwah cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of Elohim is upon you, has come upon you. When a strong man arm keeps his palace, his goods are in peace. When a stronger one, then he shall come upon him and overcome him. He taketh from him all of his armor wherein he trusted and devised his spoil. But he, but he that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scatters. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through a dry places, seeking rest and finding none. He saith, I will return unto my house whence I came out. And when he comes, he finds it swept and garnished. And that, that's, that says a lot right there about you know, our efforts to look good. Our efforts, but but we're really not good because we're trusting in our own selves. We're trusting in our flesh. 
And the, these evil spirits can see right through that. They'll come in and overpower us in an absolute heartbeat. And it goes on to say in uh, Luke chapter 11, verse 26 says, And then goeth he and taketh to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Mm -hmm. And so the, these these evil spirits, I mean, you know, the, they are being tormented now. They're, they're, they're receiving a level of torment now. It's nothing like the torment that they're going to experience. Uh, but they are persistent in trying to find a place where they can go to get some relief. And if they can get into us and 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 receive the grace that comes to us because of our relationship with the Most High, they'll come right on in and try to get as much of it they, as they they possibly can. Right. And with 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 those of us who have received the Holy Rule, they can't enter into our soul. They can't. This right. this it it, right. it negates soul possession. Now they can. You know, if we allow them to deal with our flesh, they can do right. that. You know, but uh, it, as far as soul inhabiting our soul, they can't. But for someone who has not received Yeshua, soul possession is open, and that's yeah. where this these them going out, getting seven more spirits, and bringing it back, and, and and going into that man. That's possible, and that's and that's what we're seeing here in these last days. People are actually receiving these these spirits into themselves. And may I add something to that? Art? Mm -hmm. Yes. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I apologize. But I was speaking about that CERN and you just said something that triggered a, a memory that people are receiving these, they're actively receiving these, these spirits into themselves. You can go on YouTube and you can actually find this. You can see, I'll send you the link later on tonight. But there, there was a there was a ceremony that was performed before they actually activated CERN. Where CERN is, there was a ceremony. And if you watch this ceremony, even for a short amount of time, they are they are telegraphing to you what CERN is about. I'm gonna send it to you so you can see it, but you can find it on YouTube. But the the imagery of the, the opening ceremony of the CERN project tells you everything they need to know. Not to mention they got Shiva as a as a, mm -hmm. a monarch right in the middle of the courtyard. Yeah. But I, I'll send that to you guys. Now, now wasn't CERN developed on an old uh, mm -hmm. yes. worship site? Yes. Okay. Yes, an old worship site. That's correct. It, okay. it, it, it encompasses, is it not three four different nations it's okay. a, it's yeah. a bigger project yes okay. sir. that's what i was thinking yeah it's it's something going on there but yeah so yeah i just wanted to uh, cover that before we got here man you know it was a great great conversation uh you know pray that it it helps you know it helps uh you know a lot of people to hear us discuss these these type things that you know we're not alone that all things are somehow working together uh, to the good, to them that you know, those that love the Lord and those that are the called, he says, according to his purpose. Then he goes on to say in there, you know, and I, I'm not reading, I'm just, he said all these things are happening so that we can be conformed mm -hmm. into the image yes. of his son. <laughs> Man, that is so powerful. <laughs> He's doing all this thing, these things, so he can change us to look like himself, to think like him, to walk like him, to act like him, to talk like him, so we can be conformed into the image of his son. I mean, that's powerful. That's powerful. Amazing. But anyway, any last comments before we? All praises to the Most High. All praises. Yeah, all praises. I enjoy my brothers. Amen. All right. Shalom. Yeah, yeah. Hank, I'll, I'll give you a call. <laughs> all right, man. You you know what? You know what I, I texted y'all about that satellite phone. <laughs> I hope there's still a battery in there. Uh, I'm going to get a satellite phone. I'm going to be up in the 10th heaven. I ain't going to say nothing. <laughs> yeah, you, I don't know if you'll be able to find a charger for that one. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, we talk to y'all. Shalom, brothers. All right, hey, shalom, yo, guys, hey, yo, shalom. Hey, we, we, we have to acknowledge, D-Mac, man, don't come to this meeting again and not read from an old book. <laughs> yeah, it kind of messed the vibe up. I know, man. My brother took my thunder. <laughs> it wasn't like I wasn't copping. Oh, you can't. You ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. All right, shalom. All right, shalom. Right, shalom. <laughs> shalom. In a shocking 1700s historical document of black Americans, a German professor used the term Negro as a reference to black Jews both in Africa and in Portugal. The author also makes a clear distinction between the black Jews and black Moors. The Moors were largely a distinctly different mixture of black people, most of whom had converted to the Muslim faith. The author candidly points out that the black Jews were specifically targeted for the slave trade, and that the black Moors were intentionally avoided, and that the Negroes also known as black Jews were then sent to the Americas during the slave trade. Get your ebook and audiobook bundle today. Choose from the following three options. Option 1. Get free copies of the original 1700s documents only. Option 2. Get an easy to read edited ebook, plus free copies of the original 1700s document for a low price of $10. Option 3. Get an audiobook for easy listening, plus the easy to read edited ebook, and also free copies of the original 1700s document for a low bundle price of $15. Learn the real history they don't want you to know.